unmute. Okay, now it's working. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this panel organized by the Spanish Institute of Cinema with the support of Invest in Spain. Shooting in Spain, your tax rivet made. This is the title of this talk. We like to use the expression made because we want everybody to feel at home. We want everybody to feel welcome. All the different institutions and entities involved in this initiative will make their best effort to facilitate access to these tax funds. We believe in making things easy and to work in a friendly environment, like we will work with our mates. But why Spain? Please take into account that Spain has many different kind of landscape, different kind of climates from snow to desert. We have a long international tradition of shooting in Spain, great talent, experienced and versatile professionals, and don't forget that the food is good, which is also a good point. As I said, the topic of this chat today is about the different tax incentive in Spain for international films, TV production, documentaries, animation, and VFX. I'm just going to give you a brief outline because our speakers will give you more detailed information in the particular fields. Just so you have an idea, the general incentive in mainland Spain, which is all Spain, is 30% for the first million and 25% uh, for further expenses in Spain. It applies to feature films, television series, animated films, and documentaries. The minimum expenses is 1 million for films, 200,000 for animation and VFX, and the limit of the rebate is 10 million euros. We also have in the Navarre region, Navarre is next to the Basque country, just below Fran, the tax credit is 35%. And in the Canary Islands is 50%, yes, 50% for the first million and 45% for the rest. Um, I would like you to remind, before letting uh, our speakers talk, I want to remind you that there is going to be a Q&A of about 20 minutes. You can start asking questions now through the app. You will see an icon of Q&A. Please ask your questions there from starting now. Um, I really encourage you to ask questions because today you have the biggest ex experts on the subject and it's a good opportunity to get to know more about these opportunities of shooting in Spain. Before letting everybody speak, um, I invite you to screen a small film, two minutes, that has been produced by the Spanish Film Commission that gives you an idea of the possibilities of shooting in Spain. Thank you one more time and welcome. Spain has proven that it's an incredibly viable place for, for filmmaking. It's actually really, it's been quite exciting over the last number of years to see so many incredible directors emerge from Spain. Um, and so many incredible films are being made here.
Not bad, eh? Not bad. So now we welcome uh, Teresa Cona, which is Vice President of the Spanish Film Commission. And she's going to give you more details about shooting in Spain and about all the general rebates. Thank you, Teresa, and welcome. Hey, good afternoon, Elena. Um, thank you. Thank you, Elena. And thank you to the Spanish Institute of Film for inviting us, uh, us today to, to be here at the Marche. Uh, well, uh, what to tell you, uh, Spain has always been a highly attractive country for filming, from Lawrence de Arabia and Dr. Sivago to Game of Thrones, more, more recently. As Spanish service companies say, we can replicate in Spain up to 60 to 70 percent of the world locations. Traveling by road, we can cover a wide variety of landscapes, architectures and cultures. Uh, in the past, we were chosen because of our wonderful locations, hospitality, food, high profile, professional queues and production services, and safety. And now, while coronavirus was hiding hard in Spain, our government decided to take a big decision for our future as filming destination. On May, uh, more than a month ago, Spanish government increased tax rebate for Spanish and international production. It's been a, a quick movement uh, and a significant increase. Uh, in Spain Field Commission, we, we have worked hard for years, first to convince the government in 2014 to set up the tax rebate scheme, and now in the last uh, months during the, the coronavirus crisis, we have worked hard to increase this tax rebate scheme. Uh, and what the, is the, the, the tax rebates now? Uh, for international suits, uh, tax rebate was increased from 25% uh, to 30% for the first million of expenditure, and from 20% to 25% for the rest of the expenditure of the production. But what type of production may apply for, for this incentive? Uh, future for length films, um, but also uh, television series, animated films, and documentaries. Uh, who can apply for, for the tax incentive? Um, an Spanish production company that is working for a foreign production. The company, the Spanish production company, has to be registered in Spain, has to be uh, within the Spanish corporation tax net, and has to be registered in the uh, Institute, uh, Spanish Institute of uh, Film and Audiovisual Arts. Uh, and what's the procedure? When the, the, the refund has, uh, must be applied by the, the, the Spanish company during the month of July of the year after the end of filming. An example, if we are filming today and we are producing during 2020, the rebate will be applied on July next year, 2021. It is possible for the Spanish producer to combine the Spanish star rebate with other incentives up to 50% of the production expended. Uh, another important change last month is that the, the cap for uh, each shot, the cap for uh, tax deduction has been increased. And now the cap is uh, 10 million euros that is $10.8 million, much higher than it was. And this is really important to, to, to big productions. Uh, another important uh, thing, in Spain, there is no cap in total funds available for the tax rebate. Uh, and what's the rebate base? What kind of expenditure uh, uh, is uh, eligible? Uh, is uh, uh, all expenditure incurred in Spain and uh, has to be a minimum investment of uh, 1 million euros. Uh, the cap, uh, the limit, the minimum limit for uh, post-production VFX and animation, animation is lower, it's uh, 200,000 euros. Then, uh, as I say, minimum expenditure in Spain, 1 million euros, but if it's uh, post-production, uh, BFX or animation film, then it will be 200,000 euros. Uh, there's a cap for expended, uh, of expenditure for creative staff up to a maximum of uh, uh, 100,000 per person 
or, or technical service. Uh, and the expenditure in creative staff is eligible if they have a registered address in the country, in Spain, but also in another European member state. And I, I know that there's a lot of uh, figures. Uh, I invite you that for more information, you can visit our web. It's very easy, shootinginspain.info, and you have all the information in English about the, the new uh, incentive scheme. And now we go, I'm going to the exceptions. Uh, in the Canary Islands, uh, uh, my colleague Natasha will explain much better later. Uh, in Canary Islands, we have a special regime because it's an insular and outlying territory in, in Spain. And there, the rebate has been set at 50% uh, for the first million and 45% for the rest. And that is the highest right, rate of deduction in the world. Uh, for Canary Island based service companies. And there's a cap at uh, 5.4 uh, million of tax deduction for shoot in Canary Islands, but we expect it to increase uh, uh, promptly. Other Spanish regions, such as Navarra and the West Country, they have their own tax action system. Uh, for example, Navarra offers a 35% mixed tax credit and tax rebate for Navarre-based service companies. Uh, and now I will use the words of James Costos. You know, it's a former executive of HBO and a diplomat, and now special ambassador for Springfield Commission and also president in Sequoia Studios. In words of James Costos to Variety, uh, this change in the tax scheme is a win for both Spain and uh, the US and other international film players. And given the, the produce, uh, production lockdown that existed in Hollywood before the, the coronavirus, this will be welcome news as the sector looks to, to reopen. Uh, next week, on July 1st, Spanish surprise will be open. We are ready to welcome international productions. We have already implemented new sanitary, tax and legal measures that make us the most competitive filming destination. Spain Film Commission has worked hard to make it possible. We are at your disposal to welcome you and happy to help you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Teresa, so much. I hope uh, we already are having questions uh, in our Q&A um, um, tab, so we will proceed further. Um, now uh, I want to welcome Natasha Mora, which is the coordinator of Canary Islands Film. Natasha, please welcome. Thank you, Elena, and uh, well, uh, good afternoon, and thank you uh, for attending this uh, presentation about the, the, the Spanish tax incentive for the audiovisual industry, about the, the, the possibilities of of, of shooting in Spain. Uh, now I will talk about a specific case of the Canary Islands. Well, my name is Natasha and I coordinate the audiovisual department of the Canary Islands government. Nice to meet you. Uh, well, um, the tax incentive that you can apply if you come and shoot uh, in Spain uh, that Teresa has already, already explained. These tax incentives are increased in uh, 20 percentage points if you come and shoot the same project in the Canary Islands. And why? Uh, because uh, we enjoy an own economic and tax regime. So as you know, the Canary Islands are Spanish territories. We are uh, a fragmented territory with eight islands situated in the south of Europe, near to Africa. Uh, so, uh, and because our, of our geographical situation and in order to diversify our economy, the European Union declared the Canary Islands an outermost region. And that's why we have our own economic and tax regime. And thanks to this regime, we can offer higher incentive, higher deduction than in the rest of Spain, not only for audiovisual sector, also for, for other industries. So uh, that means that in case of international production, 
uh, if you come to shoot here to the Canary Island, you can apply a 50% tax rebate uh, for the first million and a 45% tax rebate from then on. Uh, in case of Spanish production or no co-production, uh, you can apply a tax credit in this case uh, with the same percentage, a 50% tax credit uh, for the first million and a 40% 45%, excuse me, tax credit for, uh, from then on. So the, the, the limit is also higher. Uh, the incentive is capped in the Canary Island at 18 million euros. Uh, at this moment, we are waiting for the publication of this uh, legislation that uh, should reflect the new, the new limit. No? And uh, the requirements are the same. The requirements we have to follow are the same than in the rest of Spain. I mean, uh, you have to hire a local service company with tax domicile in the Canary Islands. Uh, you have to spend 1 million euros in the Canary Islands only in case of animation or visual effects, then you have to spend uh, 200,000 instead of the 1 million euros. And the third requirement is that the, the budget, the minimum, a budget of your of your project must be two million euros. So uh, these are the incentives uh, directly related with the film industry. In the Canary Island, we also have uh, two more incentives that I think uh, they are also attractive for the film industry. One of them is the Canary Island Special Zone. It's called the Dead Sex Zone. It's an incentive that allows to set up your company in the Canary Islands and benefit from a reduced rate of a 4%, instead the 25 or the 21%, you can benefit from a 4%. And the other one is our VAT. Uh, our VAT normally is 7%, but in case of shooting, in case of the, of the film industry, you will apply a 0% VAT. So uh, for all these tax rebates, tax incentive, well, and not only for the, 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 the tax uh, incentive, uh, for other reasons like, uh, of course, our weather or the natural lights that we have here in the Canary Islands and, and the location, and of course, the, the experience and not only of the, of the local industry, also uh, the experience of the, the public administration. In the last year, uh, some of the major film companies uh, like um, Universal, Warner, Paramount, or HBO, Disney, Netflix, they have shot in the Canary Islands. And some of them repeat and come again uh, to shoot the, the projects there. Mm -hmm. So uh, to, 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 to support uh, uh, the question regarding, uh, regarding the project, you can uh, contact directly with the team of Canary Islands Film. Uh, Canary Islands Film, uh, since five years ago, Canary Islands Film works as uh, uh, um, a single contact. It's the, the umbrella of the film industry in the Canary Islands, uh, founded together with the Canary Islands government, the film commission of each island, the Canary Islands special zone, and of course the film industry, the local industry. So all the agents that are uh, directly related with the film industry in the Canary Islands um, uh, form part of these umbrellas. So um, that's more or less um, our, our, our tax incentive, our, our difference in, in, in the Canary Islands. Uh, we will be active in, during Marche du Film. You can find our contact in um, Cinema from Spain Pavilion. So, and if you want to, to learn more or any doubts that you have, please do, do not hesitate to, to contact us. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, Natasha. We are all running to the Canary Islands, not only because of the incentive, but because of the wonderful weather and the wonderful landscape and the wonderful people over there. Um, now, we, I would like to welcome Adrian Guerra. Adrian Guerra is a really experienced producer. His company is called Nostromo Pictures. He's been involved as an executive producer of small things like was. Next World by Olivera Sayas that was in Venice Film Festival. He's also the producer of a film that is one of the most intelligent, daring films in the past year that is called Barriet by Rodrigo Cortez, Red Lies, Blackwood, and uh, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on. 
So um, I would like to welcome uh, Adrian and please Adrian, give us a little bit of all your knowledge, share with us all your knowledge in co-productions as well as production service. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Uh, thank you to Deika and Ethex in Spain for inviting me to this panel. Uh, my name is Adrian Guerra, and as uh, Elena said, I'm a producer at Nostromo Pictures and president of Profin, that's the association of Spanish production services in Spain. Uh, I've, as Elena said, I've done a fair share of uh, production services, co-production. I've shot my movies in Spain. I've shot all over the world my movies. I shot in Colombia, in the States, in Canada. So I'm very familiar with how production services work in the world. And I think there's no place like Spain. We have a, a wonderful country. Uh, we have, I don't know, Spain is one of the most visited territories in the world. Like I think after France, uh, we we get like 75 million people every year. So we have amazing hotels, safety, uh, infrastructures, uh, people speak English and other languages. So it's a very welcoming uh, country to come in and work. Um, Thanks to the new uh, updates on the tax incentive, I think we are in a great position to become uh, a major production hub in Europe uh, for productions all over the world. Um, we have right now two schemes for tax incentive. One of them is for foreign productions, another one is for Spanish productions and co-productions. Uh, for foreign productions, it's quite straightforward. Uh, basically, uh, a foreign producer that wants to come shoot in Spain, they need to engage uh, a Spanish producer, create a, a vehicle, an SPV, or, or just use the producer's entity that's registered at ICA, and um, engage them with a PSA, with a production services agreement, to develop the task in Spain. So after production is done, uh, the tax year of, the, of that entity finishes, uh, they can claim back the tax credit. It's as easy as that. It doesn't uh, involve complex audit processes or qualifications. Uh, the requirements are quite simple. Uh, and, and so far, this is working beautifully. Uh, we had the problem up to recently that the cap uh, was 3 million euros, so that enabled uh, productions to come here for, for a, a long time. Now it has been improved, so now we have a cap of 10 million euros uh, and we have in mainland Spain 30% tax rebate on the first million of expenditure and we have a 25% uh, rebate on the rest of the expenditure. Uh, this, as my partner said earlier, gets improved in, Can in Canary Islands and Navarra. Um, so far, as I said, the experience with the foreign tax rebate is excellent and it's been improved and we think it's the most straightforward and easier way for uh, foreign producers to come into Spain because you don't need a qualification process and you can come in right away and get up and working within weeks. Um, so yeah, so that's for, for foreign productions. For co-productions, uh, we need to uh, go through the Spanish tax shelter. Uh, and compared to the foreign film tax rebate, the difference is that tax shelter, you need to find a local taxpayer to cast the tax incentive. Like uh, if you are a foreign movie coming to Spain, the government will pay you directly. If you are doing a co-production or you are doing a Spanish local film, you need to find a wealthy company, a wealthy individual that pay many taxes that will uh, exchange your tax credit for, for money. Uh, the process is it's really good, uh, but it's more complex than uh, with services. You need to qualify as a Spanish, uh, which requires going to the Spanish Film Institute and meeting a, a minimum of, of parameters in, um, where there's a, a number of Spanish or EU nationals that need to be involved both on the creative side and on below the line on certain processes that need to happen in Spain. Uh, it's nothing out of the ordinary and most territories have a bilateral treaty with Spain, uh, but it's not something that you do overnight. It's something that needs some prep. And uh, I would say you need at least two months of uh, leeway to do it uh, 
before your production actually starts. Um, the good thing about going through the tax shelter compared to the to the foreign tax rebate is that on the foreign tax rebate you get the rebate basically on your pure Spain in Spain. So if you are hiring a grip in Spain, you get a rebate back on that grip. Or uh, but if you're hiring a UK actor in Spain, you would only get rebate up to 100k on that fee. If you are going through the Spanish tax shelter, then there's no caps. So if you hire a major star that's coming to Spain is getting paid half a million dollars, then you're getting the tax shelter on the half a million dollar fee. Also, it there's some benefits that you, know, you can qualify the Spanish PNA, uh, finance expenses, overhead charges, like everything that's normally in, in the budget will qualify with no um, limits in into the tax shelter. Um, so yeah, it's it's very straightforward uh, if you have the taxpayer investor. Uh, that's something that we'll see this year how it works given the COVID situation. But uh, so far there's uh, a few companies that are specialized in this and they can help uh, foreign producers coming into Spain navigate those waters. And we have really uh, top-notch uh, tax uh, firms in Spain that are also specialized in helping producers set up the vehicles for this. Uh, the good news also, besides having uh, the increased tax shelter, is that now uh, the subsidies and soft money in Spain have been updated to allow uh, for easier access to funding for minority co-productions. Uh, up to recently, because of the economic crisis, most of the funding from sub subsidies uh, was going to purely Spanish movies or majority Spanish produced films. So that didn't allow us a Spanish producer to really be competitive with a French producer or a German producer when it came to, to being a minority producer. Now uh, the system has changed. Uh, they've introduced, for example, in Catalonia, they've introduced a new subsidy line for minority co-productions. So I think uh, now Spain is going to be a major player in the co-production area. Uh, we will see a lot more Spanish co-productions uh, in Europe in the next few months. Um, yeah, I think I had a minute, so I don't know if I spend all of them. Uh, I can answer more specific questions in the Q&A. Uh, um, thank you for listening. Thanks a lot, Adrian. That was very enlightening. Um, thank you for sharing your experience. And our next speaker is Gonzalo Carrion. He's member. He's a member of Divus, which is an association um, um, focused on animation and VFX. Gonzalo is also the managing director of El Ranchito, which is a VFX studio that has done small little things like the dragons of Game of Thrones. They have been involved in Jurassic Park, The Fallen Kingdom, The Mandalorian. They are also responsible for creating the wave that destroys everything in the impossible. So as you can see, um, there are very competitive and very interesting VFX studios in Madrid. So Gonzalo, please let us know all the wonderful things that you do in El Ranchito. Okay, thank you, Elena. Thank you all for attending this session of the Marche Film uh, for giving us the opportunity of uh, speaking. Uh, I'm Gonzalo Carrion, Managing of Director of El Ranchito, member of the board of the Spanish Federation Animation, as I said, Elena Divos, which I represent also which, uh, with Adrian. I'm also a member of the board of the Profilm, the International Production Service Companies Association, and Alia, the Audiovisual in Industry Alliance Association. I'm very excited and proud of talking the benefits of hiring VFX in Spain because there are tons of benefits. I'm not getting into the um, tax rebate because I think my, my colleagues just make every point clear. Um, I'm just talking about uh, why we should uh, hire, you should hire BFX uh, companies. Uh, we know that most of the people see Spain as sun, wine, siesta and paella, and we love that. But we also have amazing technology, digital artists, lighting fast connectivity, production companies, as Adrian just mentioned, and also visual effects companies. 
So let me talk about what is needed to do astonishing the effects work. Um, well, you, you first need to be technical. You have to be an artist. You need a very, very good internet connection, digital security, a lot of hard work, tons of patience, and mixed, everything mixed with a competitive price. And of course, the trust of our clients. So I want to talk about how Spanish technology comes into visual effects. Spanish technology has been present in the visual effects industry from the beginning. Did you know a Spanish company that had developed the first unbiased render inspiring others to follow that vision? And that company has been the Technical Achievement Award of the Oscars for making the simulation of fluids for the Lord of the Ring. That company's next limit was some years ago. Talking about render, do you know that Arnold Render is the industry standard used by far by all the visual effects company in the whole world has been developed in Spain by Marcos Fajardo. So we have great, great minds. What can we do with all those pixels? We need to mix them. It's not all about rendering and simulation. For that, you can use Mystica, the world's most advanced hero suite for editing, color grading, stereo, VR, 8K, an incredible VFX finishing tool. Mystica has been developed by SEO here in Spain for the last 27 years. If we are talking about working from home, everything goes cloud, as we can see with the coronavirus. Then we have to talk about simple cloud animation, a pipeline on cloud services, render farms. Simple cloud animation is a global cloud-based platform for digital content management and creation. It's a great example on how collaborative workloads can be very efficient and secure. And about digital security, I have to mention that the Spanish company are now migrating from the Motion Picture Association standard to the Trust Partner and Network standard, applying the highest content and security controls in the industry. There is also a lot of research and development going on with the virtual production in Spain. We are collaborating with the top companies to create the industry standards of Victor production. So everything will be set when you decide to shoot in Spain in our virtual sets with the best photorealistic assets made just for you. So we know how to be technical. We are so technical that we built the technology that makes VFX and also we do it with the highest security standards. If we are talking about internet connectivity, that's a must in the VFX industry. Spain is the eighth country in the whole world of internet connectivity. We have the state-of-the-art infrastructures of amazing huge companies as Telefonica, Indra, making sure that everything works on the clock. When the Spanish authorities declared the state of alarm because of the coronavirus on Thursday, 13th of May, in just three days, companies like Emarranchito or Illino Studio, now Skyline and Animation, with over 300 people, work from without any issues at all, like a regular Monday in three days. I want to thank to all the Spanish IT teams. They did an extraordinary work under high pressure circumstances. We have great minds and great technicians. So we need to be artists. Um, well, we are a very, very talented digital artist. Uh, we have a cultural visual inheritance from Velázquez, Picasso, Oya, you all know, know those painters, Chiquita, Eduardo Arroyo, you know, sculptures, Antonio Lopez. Art runs really through our veins. All over the world, you can see Spanish artists like Carlos Baena, you know, working in companies like ILM, Pixar, he's CEO of Animator Mentors, and now directing feature films like La Noria, you know? or Carlos Caballero, you know, DFX uh, supervisor at DINEC, or Ivan Busquets, BFX supervisor at Industrial Light and Magic, a very, very talented artist in the world. Thanks to the Spanish artists with this technical view, we have been awarded by the Emmys, by Visual Effects Society, and the Hollywood Professional Association. That's why companies, as uh, Adrian just mentioned, and Teresa has mentioned, uh, like Netflix, Amazon, HBO, Apple, Disney, Paramount, Universal, has trust BSFX, the Spanish companies, to develop their shows like The Mandalorian, Game of Thrones, Lost in Space, Lock and Key, Yearstone, Jurassic World, Megan Levy, Colony. So we are technical. We have an extraordinary artist, digital security, and great infrastructures. And as I mentioned before, to wrap it all up, we have very competitive price. 
the tax incentive of 200k minimum at 30 percent of the first million and 25 percent thereafter of eligible spend and the astonishing currently rebate is a very very it's really a great game changer all the projects small or big can benefit of it spain ranks the fourth in the fourth place to work and live in the whole world the great overall well-being because of the good weather safety schooling healthcare so we get artists from all over the world every day joining our community. So we are not going to run out of artists. So I suppose Paella, Sun, Siesta does something to do with it after all. We know how to work hard, but we know how to live well. I think that's the secret of life. So uh, I want to hire a BFX company. It sounds very great. What should I do? Well, you should uh, contact the uh, Spanish Federation of Animation and VFX Divus, and they will find the right partner for your show. Uh, I want to introduce Natalie from Divus, and she can talk more about animation. And, but first, we have a little video of animation of the reel of Divus, just to, to see. I don't know if you can't put the video. Mm. Perdón, eh, que, mm. I, can you shoot the, the video? Put the video on. So I think I'm going to have a little. This has been standing. Yes. Um, the video is going, it's, you know. I think we are giving uh, the floor to Natalie Martinez first, and then we are closing with the video. I think that was the latest, uh, the latest indication. Um, please, um, um, yeah, we are trying, sorry, I'm just listening to the other, yeah, Jerome, yeah. Oh. Jerome, do you think we can? Jerome, do you think um, we can have the video now, or maybe it's better? Okay, let's have Natalie here because it seems the video is gonna take a little bit. So Natalie, please, Natalie Martinez from Wise Blue Studios, uh, which is an animation studio that has done. Bueno, the latest thing is Animal Crackers. Just a small little, just a small animation with the voices of Josh Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Sylvain <laughs> McKellen, Danny DeVito, Sylvester Stallone, which was premiered at Nazi in official selection in 2017. So welcome, Natalie. And um, please let us know about your wonderful animation expertise. Thank you, thank you very much. So I knew something were gonna, was gonna happen and it happened to me. I'm a magnet for this kind of things. You were supposed to be watching a video right now, but I'm sure we're gonna be able to play it a little bit later. So don't worry, expect a great animation. So thank you, Elena, for, uh, for having me. Thank you the, to the Academy of, um, to the Ministry of Culture and the ICA, the Cinema Division, uh, for having me here to tell you a little bit more about animation. My name is Natalie Martinez, and uh, I'm a producer on Animal Crackers and other shows, but uh, now I'm uh, a producer at Wise Blue Studio, Studios, my new studio, and I'm here as Gonzalo Carrion, my fellow um, um, in the Dibus um, Federation. Dibus is the Spanish Animation and VFX Guild of Producers. So you know we are both representing this federation, and this federation represents around 85% of all animation and VFX companies in the country. So when looking for a partner, as Gonzalo mentioned, in Spain regarding these domains, either VFX or animation, we really encourage you to contact the deal through a website, which is www.debus.com, spelled with a double O. And uh, from, the, from there, we will take care of introducing you to all our, as all our associates and find the right fit for your needs. That said, um, and I should be able to talk about the video right now, but it's not going to happen. So you will be able to watch later a uh, very nice showcase video showing the diversity, the creative diversity of all our associates in, uh, in both forms, animation styles and formats as well. 
and you will see how remarkable 2D animation, uh, 2D animation work we have, CGI animation as well, VFX, full animated movies, hybrid movies with integration and live action movies. So only that, what you're going to be able to watch in this video is already a good reason to come work with us in Spain. But now, thanks to this new tax rebates, we can really offer an even better frame. Uh, so let me break down a little bit for you how we can take advantage of these new conditions. Uh, first of all, the type of productions we can undertake together in animation and uh, how we can take advantage of this new, new, new situation is clearly diverse. Uh, as m some of my, um, my fellow panelists already mentioned to you, uh, we can both also in animation on two different type of productions, co-productions involving Spanish investors, as Adrian already explained to you. This option also benefits from remarkable higher percentage on tax rebates with this new uh, regulation now. And we can also work in straight work for higher jobs, providing production services in animation and VFX. When providing production services, we can outsource a full movie. You can outsource a full movie to us or, or just partial jobs, like a full department, part of the animation, post-production work only, etc. whatever you think about. And this is really what the new regulations of tax rebates have brought uh, a game changer, to our, game changer to our industry. Both animation and VFX benefit from the new ground regarding the minimum expense in Spain. The new minimum expense, as my, uh, my mates uh, already explained to you, require uh, only a 200K, 200,000 euros expense, eligible expense in Spain to apply to tax rebates. So let me say this again, the minimum eligible expense in Spain is 200,000 euros. And why is this a game changer? Well, before uh, that time, um, the minimum threshold for expenses was 1 million. But from now on, with this 200K grant for animation and VFX specifically, practically every production can apply to the tax rebates, regardless of the size of the budget. Uh, so you would imagine the number of things we can do for you, animation services, teasers for movies, storyboarding or previous work for live action movies, pilots, TV shows, or direct to video movies with a small to medium sized budget, everything you might want to outsource uh, there is full production, so partial services might be able to apply right now with this new ground that's been lowered for uh, animation and VFX. But this is just regarding the minimum uh, in order to apply. As my previous fellows already mentioned, uh, the maximum cap has also been raised to 10 million, which opens a new sc scenario for outsourcing full movies production uh, to full movie productions to Spain. Raising the cap to 10 million, so you have an example, allow us to undertake the full production of movies up to 30, 35 percent, uh, 30, 30 or 35 million uh, in Spain mainland, depending on the legible expenses. Uh, and of course, we have also companies, animation companies and VFX companies in uh, Canary Island that can benefit from uh, even higher cap to 18 million. So, but my, my colleague from the Canary Island already explained that to you. So think, uh, I will encourage you to think how many paperwork and communication and coordination issues you might save you yourself by outsourcing all the production to a, a single country or company instead of having to split the work between different territories in order to maximize the tax rebates of uh, every country as we used to know until now. So now we can save you time, paperwork, <laughs> coordination issues, and all of this by producing your movie in a single country or with a single company, ideally here in Spain. So we have creativity, we have uh, versatility, we also have great tax incentives. What else? Technology and artistic background will be my two takes. Uh, my fellow Gonzalo already explained a lot about technology. I'm not going to try <laughs> to you know, play him. He's the best, speaking of this. Uh, just point out that connectivity, working overseas, video calls, uh, online, production tracking tools, uh, working in the cloud, all that was already in our DNA way before COVID-19. Uh, but I cannot stress enough how ready we are to face uh, any other way in which we don't have to, uh, or any other incident that, uh, you know, s make us force us to work from home or overseas. We have already been working overseas internationally for years, so all these tools uh, that are so important right now in this era were already part of our DNA since forever, I would say. 
uh, put it this way, we will be able to work with you as if you were really here, even if you are 10,000 miles away. That is true, you won't have paella, but we'll work on that. Um, so that will be one thing, the technology. The other thing, the other part will be the Spanish cultural background, which is why we recognize, as Gonzalo already mentioned, too. Spanish artists has been present in the international scene for a while now. And you all might have heard of, you know, the several movies that have been uh, multiple, multiple awarded uh, in the last year or two years. Um, I mean, the first example that comes to my mind, and you for sure have heard about is Klaus, which was uh, Oscar nominee for Best Animated uh, Feature in 2019, but it was also winner of seven Annie Awards, a BAFTA, two Goyas, uh, what else, Buñuel in the Labyrinth of the Turtles, Annie Awards nominee as well, winner at Annecy for Best, best Score, and Goya Award winner for Best Animated Movie. Tad Jones franchise, huge hit, huge hit at the Spanish box office and also distributed in a countless number of territories. Uh, Another Day of Life, Goya World winner on this year too, on this year and winner at the European Cinema Awards for Best Animated Movie among other multiple awards. And closer to us, and I don't want to forget, uh, right now, Giuseppe. Giuseppe is an animated movie in the official selection at the Festival de Film de Cannes. Uh, 2020 and uh, allow me to wish all the best to the team here at the festival. So as you can see, uh, you know, the talent is there, but not only that, our Spanish talent is demanded and recruited internationally with a remarkable presence of all the Spanish artists in all the big studios around the world, but very special in Canada, US, UK. And also we constantly, we, the, the producers, guild, the institutions, uh, companies, everybody works to build an even better uh, talent pool here in Spain through education and, um, and making huge improvements in that part too. But as Gonzalo mentioned, it's true that I mean, being part of the European Union and not needing a visa to attract talent from uh, the whole Europe, or talent pool really, really reaches the whole continent. So that's, that's great. Um, needless to say that because Spain belongs to the European Union, uh, we also guarantee a common and extremely secure legal frame in all related contract, IP protections for producers and creators because these days being out globally, well, that's also important to point out. Uh, so I'm sorry if I'm speaking too fast. I'm used to, I used to do it. Uh, so uh, forgive me, is that the case? Let me recap because I know we are uh, running out of, out of time. Uh, working with Spain uh, in a secure legal frame, benefiting from remarkable new tax rebates, having access to a great talent pool from Spain and Europe, with cutting it technology companies in a highly qualified and connected industry at a competitive price point. What else would you need to know? Well, as Gonzalo mentioned, maybe a little bit more about our wonderful Paella Sunny. Well, yeah, that's true. We, we have one of the most friendly lifestyles and beautiful countries around the world. So I'm sure you're gonna love working with us. So before saying goodbye, let me encourage you again to get in touch with us at uh, www.divus.com and we'll help you through the process of connecting with the best company for you and your work. Thank you very much. Back to you, Elena. Thank you, Natalie. And now, yes, now we are going to see the video about animation that um, our animation fellows have prepared for us. Let's see if this time is working.
Well, that was it. So um, now we are starting with our Q and A. Um, we are we start with the first question that is. What's the maximum percentage for the taxpayer investment in Hispanic co-productions? And it's by an anonymous attendee. So um, uh, maybe Teresa can answer this question. Teresa, what's the maximum percentage for the taxpayer investment in Spanish co-productions? Okay, Elena, thank you. Hi. Uh, for Spanish co-productions, co the, um, they qualify as Spanish films and the maximum amount, the maximum percentage now is the same as for international productions. That is 30% uh, for the first million in, uh, in Spain with uh, the section of uh, uh, Basque Country, Navarre and Canary Island. In Canary Island, the maximum amount is 50% uh, for the first million and 45% uh, for the rest of the expenditure. Uh, I, I can add up to this, as Adrián has said, when we talk about the Spanish co-production, uh, another important fact is to uh, analyze the expenditure, uh, the eligible expenditure. Because uh, in, uh, for international productions, there are some caps that don't apply for uh, um, Spanish productions. But I think uh, that uh, we we'll need to we would need to analyze the, this case in particular to 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 say. But uh, as uh, as the question was maximum percentage, the maximum percentage is as I said, thirty uh, percent for the first million in Spain. Uh, with the exception of uh, Canary Island, that is 50%. Uh, can, uh, sorry, uh, just to clarify one thing. If the question is about a Spanish taxpayer who wants to invest in a Spanish film, he can invest up to 25% of his tax corporate or uh, IRPF as a professional. Like if you are paying million euros in taxes, then you can offset up to 25% of that. If you invest more, then you can offset it the next years, but it's capped at 25% of your uh, tax payment. Okay, I, I, I thought it was about the production and not the investor. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian, for your... Uh... I, I think it was more about, it, it was about the, I got, um, it was about the, because it says the maximum percentage for the taxpayer investment. Anyway, next question, I think, is for our animation, people, um, Gonzalo or Natalie, how competitive are the rates in Spain for animation? So Gonzalo, would you like to start? Uh, yeah. well, I, would, I would say they are great. I mean, they are great uh, because the cost of living in Spain is not as high as other territories. So they are well paid, but still, you know, for an international budget, it's quite affordable. And that combined with the new tax rebates and, uh, and all what we've been speaking here today, uh, it makes it even better. So I will encourage people to connect with us. Usually companies can work with you through the budget and putting together uh, you know, all these rates for you. I wouldn't call it great because it depends on a lot. Uh, but yeah, I mean, tailor a budget for you and see if it's, if it, how it works, applying with and without tax rebates. But before our prices are uh, um, surprisingly, you know, um, better than other territories because of the cost of living in Spain, which is a great thing that we have to. Gonzalo, would you like to add something to this? Yeah, I, I have to mention about the quality. Um, maybe there are other countries that are cheaper. Of course, they are a lot, but uh, maybe not with not that quality. So, because I think a Spanish. Uh, for the rate of, of quality and expense is a very, very good uh, bargain. So, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> so this is not very easy sometimes. It's not very organic sometimes. Okay, we have a question that is about, uh, you know, is the tax rate in Mallorca 30% of the first million and 25% of the second, third, etc. Yes, 
that is that's correct. Mallorca, so far, so far, there are not other incentives in Mallorca. We know that there is like the Balearic Film Commission is thinking about that. Maybe Teresa can give us uh, more information, but so far it applies the same rebate than in mainland Spain. Teresa, do you have more information on the subject? Or, or... It's perfect what have you, you have said, Elena. It's the same incentive as uh, in, uh, in the rest of mainland uh, Spain. What I suggest uh, to the um, to the people who ask this question is that uh, he can go to the uh, Mallorca Field Commission. They are at the uh, um, uh, Cannes Online Market, and they can give you more information. But the, as uh, as refers to the rebate, is thirty percent for the first million and twenty five percent for the for the rest, as Elena has said. Okay, we have a very interesting question from Nassim Abbasi. Thanks for listening, Nassim. Um, the question is, I have a film project set in Morocco with some Spanish cast, like one of the main characters. Can my project benefit from tax rebate if some of the crew is Spanish? Um, oh, sorry, it's like, um, uh, sorry, if some of this crew is Spanish and if post-production is done in Spain? Yeah, I can answer. Yes, uh, uh, I think with minimum updates, you can probably uh, qualify as a minority co-producer. Uh, it depends on how many uh, Spanish elements you have in the cast. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like you're in the right path to qualify for a minority co-production where you can access the tax, uh, the tax shelter, not the tax rebate, because uh, the tax rebate will only work for the post-production. If you're using tax shelter, then you will also be able to claim the tax incentive on the Spanish actors' fees while working in Morocco, and the same with any Spanish teams you take to Morocco with you. Okay, thank you. Um... Adrian, now we have a question for Natasha. Uh, hi, this is Michael from Seven Island Film, Canary Islands. It will be good to mention that the maximum in Canary Islands is for the 36.2 is 54% for the first million if the total budget is not too small, that the 54% will be more than 50% of the total budget by Michael Fredlin. I'm not sure what he means, Natasha. Maybe yes, you I are. Know, I know. Okay, I know. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, Michael. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it's indeed possible, uh, but not for all projects. Uh, as a public okay. institution, we give the message uh, of the 5045. Uh, because this 5045 tax rebate is sure for all the projects. But but in some cases. It's, uh, it will be possible to apply a 54% tax rebate for the first million, but it depends on uh, your deduction base and it depends on the total cost of your project. So we give the message in general about 50-45 because it's sure for all the projects, but uh, there are some cases that you will apply or you could, uh, can apply the 54%, but uh, you have to study uh, case uh, by case uh, the project okay but is um, is indeed possible the 54 percent okay thanks Teresa I hope uh, I'm sure uh, Natasha sorry uh, okay let's go to the next one let's go to the next one it takes a little bit of time um, this is for either Gonzalo or Natalie what is the current trend for animation for Spanish Studio 2D or 3D? And since there is another animation question, I mean VFX question, sorry, Fernando Ayon wants to know, um, would you mind talking about real-time chroma key in a studio? I, you know, I, I, I think he wants to, uh, he, he refers to more the artistic side that really the production side, but since, uh, you know, we're, we're having you, Gonzalo and Natalie, if you will be so kind to answer the, both of the questions. The trend for animation for Spanish Studio 2D or 3D. Um, would you mind talking about real-time chroma key in a studio? Thanks. 
Okay, uh, so if I'm, uh, I'm going to take care of the trend and then I'm going <laughs> to send, send it over to Gonzalo to speak about the, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have uh, any idea of technical questions. So, uh, well, the, we, we do both. We have a huge uh, history of, um, and tradition, I would say, of uh, 2D animation because, you know, here in Spain, as Gonzalo mentioned before, all the artistic background that we have had along the years, you know, and also the comic books uh, and comic artists has been remarkable in Spain. So we have a huge 2D animation um, background. But it's true that uh, in the last, let's say, 15 to 10 years, to 10 years, a lot of very good and very well reputed 3D or CGI animation companies have emerged. And some of the top ones are CGI animation. And we could speak about Ilion, now called Skydance anima Animation, or even li uh, Lightbox, with, uh, which are, are the curators of Tab Jones, my own company is also a CGI company. So I think um, maybe, uh, but for example, uh, Klaus was done in a uh, traditional 2D animation house, Spa Studios, but they also uh, improved and innovated in the techniques for 2D, uh, doing this kind of mix in between 2D and, and CGI look. So I would say there's, not a trend, uh, but if you are interested of in one on another or another, you should contact us because we for sure are gonna find you the right partner. And now I'm sending it over to Gonzalo, okay. deal with the technical. <laughs> okay, um, we are talking about chroma key in, in, in real time. Then we have to talk about virtual production because it is, is really is um, a system that uh, tracks uh, the camera live so you can put the asset by uh, maybe Unreal or, or another game engine. Uh, you can see how the lighting on the set is uh, live. So um, the um, uh, DP can really light the actors as, as they were there. So it's very, very good for uh, integration. So um, the secret of that is uh, getting a very, very detail assets, very high detail. If you get cheap assets, you will get a cheap background. But um, we are uh, making a lot of progress in that, in that uh, thing, in visual production, not only for chroma keying, but also for uh, putting the LED panels. It's, those technologies can combine together. And also you have to think about uh, visual production as an insurance. I, why is that? Because maybe you have a set and uh, you have a digital double of that set. So maybe it gets burned or it gets deteriorated by, by, by whatever. So you have a scan before. Um, you did a lighter scan and, and photogrammetry of, of the set. So you have this digital double of the set. So you can use it afterwards no i think that's a very very good idea that is settled in the in the in the industry and also because of the retakes i think it's a great advantage because maybe the retake you have to do uh, months after or with this coronavirus they stopped the the they stopped the production and then if you have this digital double set uh, you can go to an, to another studio put a chroma uh, get uh, this um, camera struct in real time, get the asset, uh, the, your digital double, and light it up, and then shoot. So I think it's a very, very good, interesting uh, technology that in Spain is investing a lot in, in it. And yeah, I think it's the future that is right now in the fingertips. And I, I can add that in Madrid, we there's a first LED volume states yeah. in the south of uh, Europe. So there's a lot of uh, facilities already in place in the territory to take advantage of visual production. Okay, thank you. This is a question that maybe uh, you can answer, um, uh, Adrian, uh, because they are they they want to know if it's possible to benefit from two of the subsidies from the tax rebate from the canary island and also from the inline tax rebate 
No te oímos, Gonza eh, Adrián, perdón. ¿Me oís? Hello. Ahora sí, yeah, ahora sí. Perfecto. Yeah, it's it's possible. It's something that we do very often. Like we in Sudan, a movie in in Canary Islands, and sometimes some processes need to place to take place in mainland Spain. So you ask Mark, uh, what expenditure takes place in mainland Spain and what takes place in in the islands, and apply the 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 percentage that makes sense for it. So it's it's something completely standard as usual. Okay, thank you. May I, Elena? Yes, sure. Yes, uh, just to say, uh, to, uh, to adapt to this answer, that of course you can combine uh, um, uh, production in, in, May, in continental Spain and in Canary Island, but you can uh, add up the incentive for the same expenditure. Okay. And you can get a 50% and then a 30% and an 80% for the same expenditure, yet, just to clarify. Okay, that's, I think that maybe that is what this um, person was trying to say. That, that okay, we have a couple more questions. Let me see. Okay, um, I mean, this one is uh, from an, another anonymous attendee. How might producers go about making a connection with the Spanish co-producers if they have no prior connection with the Spanish producer? Well, there is something called Spanish Film Commission, and the Spanish Film Commission may able to assist anybody who is interested in making connection with the Spanish producers. Right, Teresa? Yes, that's right. And not only us, of course, Spain Film Commission and all the regional film commission that uh, are now in Cannes, but also the, the Spanish Film Institute that is hosting this, uh, this panel. Uh, they, they are helping uh, Spanish producers and they are in contact with, I would say, uh, all the producers in Spain and uh, also Invest in Spain, that is a, a branch of the Spanish government then you have three different <laughs> steps you can go to, to, to look for information for, for product co-producers. If I okay. may, Elena, uh, I will just, you know, yes. in the case of animation and VFX, as I said, any of these venues are great. And if you want to contact direct with us, is as, as I mentioned during my speech, connect with uh, divu.com, which is our website. We have a form there. You can write and introduce your company and we'll, we'll match you up with the, the right company for your project. Okay, um, one, another question by Ileana Vasquez. Are there any funding aside from the rebates? Um, this is very general because it depends whether if it's a Spanish national, if the film qualifies as a Spanish film, if, the, if it's just uh, like a production service. Um, Adrian, maybe that you are very experienced in both fields, you would like to answer? Yeah, sure. Um, what was the question? I, I, I got <laughs> getting between as you were reading and I cannot see it here. On the okay, Q and A okay, list, it's not showing up. The question is: Are there any funding aside ah, okay. from the I got that one. If you are doing a Spanish movie, yes, you can apply for subsidies and local grants, but uh, the the whole support from the Spanish government is capped generally at a fifty percent between what you can get from the Spanish tax rebate and what you get from the subsidies. Okay, thanks a lot, Adrian. I don't know if we have more questions. Let me see. Anyway, um, oh, uh, one last question because uh, you know we have like a couple of minutes. Does Spain have a treaty in place with Czech Republic? Do we know that? Actually, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if anyone here can answer us. But anyway, in the webpage of the Institute of Cinema, which is ICAA, um, there are, uh, is, is a page that is in English and you can see all the international treaties. I'm not sure right now, I don't know if anybody can answer this, uh, whether if there is a, a treaty with Czech Republic. It's by, the question is by Christine Kreska. Yes, uh, I think there's a, a co-production treaty, but as, I, as you said, the best is that they go to the to the Spanish Film Institute uh, page and you have all the information there. But I think there's a co-production treaty with the Czech Republic. 
Okay, this is a question for Natasha. Uh, are you considering to change the minimum two million budget and a million spending in Canarias to help the low budget productions? Ah, yeah, mm, it's a good question. Yes, uh, <laughs> we, 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 we talk about it and we, we try to do that, but uh, it's not our competence. That's something that uh, should allow by the tax uh, revenue in Spain, not by the Canary Islands government. But uh, yes, we think about uh, to, to, to change the minimum spend in the Canary Island and the two million euros of budget uh, because it's important also to, to hold uh, so medium uh, budget, medium projects. But it's not our competence, sorry. <laughs> It's a pity, it's a pity, but the question is good. The question is good and it's something very important that, uh, you know, can be considered by the tax authorities. Okay, we have a question by eight for Adrian. Adrian, if I have a, feed, a film eight, eight millimeters and the Spanish co-production, ah, oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I, if I have a film eight million and the Spanish co-production part is 40%, but most of the shooting takes place in two other countries. Can I use the tax shelter for the Spanish creative and the crew shooting outside of Spain and then make use of the, rate of the rebate if the post-production is modeled in Spain? Did I get it right? It's by Miguel Escobar. In, in theory, it's possible to combine the Spanish tax shelter and the, and the Spanish uh, tax rebate. The problem is for the tax shelter, you need to have a minimum of 50% of Spanish local expenditure. So if you uh, I, you want to reroute some of the local expenditure to the tax rebate, then you won't have enough to trigger the tax shelter. I think in this case, you are most likely looking to do it all through the tax shelter. I think once you set up the structure, it's easy to just keep it under one roof, especially at that budget level. If you're talking about 40 million, then it may make sense, but 8 million, I think, it's completely doable under the tax shelter scheme. Okay, thank you so much uh, for to all the attendees. Thank you for your questions. I'm afraid we're running out of time. Uh, just to wrap it up, to wrap it up, I would like to remind you that the tax rebate in mainland Spain is 30% for the first million and 25% for the rest of the expenditure made in Spain. Canary Islands is no less than 50% the first million and 45% for the rest. Uh, the minimum uh, expenditure is uh, 2 million euros. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sorry? 1 million. 1 million. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. We were talking about this and, I'm, I'm, and um, there is also the Navarre incentives, 35%. But in any case, please, you have all the website Canary Islands Films, uh, shootinginspain.com, and um, you also have the website of the ICAA, ICAA, which is the Spanish Film Institute. So thank you for being here, and I hope we see you all in Spain very, shoot, very soon, shooting films and all kinds of productions. Thank you for being here, and thank you to all our speakers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.